in my last video, somebody asked me to say something personal about myself. I came down to this spot in hopes of showing a dinosaur statue called Denny, who used to be a local icon, well still is in some ways, but is much harder to reach these days because I think of people's fascination with a certain shape. This dinosaur is 125 tons, or still is, I believe, and he's the long-necked, long-tailed kind. He was the mascot of Calgary for many years. He was crawled on by thousands of kids, including me, back in the days when there wasn't as much liability concern, and I guess before he took a lot of wear from all those children climbing on him. But uh, at, when I was a kid, it was thought that these types of dinosaurs were built the way they were because they lived in swamps. Much like these days, I guess, we have this obsession in my city with building bridges. And that's why I can't get over to where I could show you the dinosaur right now, because the way is blocked by construction for a new bridge. Now, this seems to me, in this city, that we have almost this obsession with bridges and with dinosaurs as well, this certain kind. And it seems to me that this is not really an example of Darwin's natural selection, that is, something that would ser serve a utilitarian purpose, that would allow an animal to survive better in its environment, that would allow it to fight better, gather food better, or serve any purpose other than attracting mates, in which case the adaptation is called sexual selection. And in many dinosaurs, this has been proposed. Hadrosaurs, the duckbills, and the ceratopsians, the horned ones with their frills, are thought to be examples of sexual selection, like frills being the same sort of thing a moose or a deer would have with its antlers to attract mates. This makes sense to me, and yet the most obvious one, it seems to me, has been overlooked, which is the sauropod, the long-necked, long-tailed kind, the kind that looks like a giant bridge. And this, I think, this long neck is not developed for fighting. If you look at people, and uh, boxers in particular, George Plimpton tried to be a boxer once and write about it, but the guys with the long necks make the worst boxers. They're very easy to knock out. And long necks make a good target. Now, if they, they are used by creatures like giraffes for sparring to show off when they're trying to attract mates. But once again, they're not much good against something like a lion, as far as I know. Also, in people, Long necks are things that we somewhat irrationally associate with wealth and attractiveness. We give these people a competitive mating advantage for no apparent reason. Tall people are paid more money and they're regarded as more attractive. If you want to be a supermodel, it's a good thing to be tall. Yet we don't seem to apply these same rules to sauropod dinosaurs. Why not? Uh, it also seems to me that there are ways that people try to lengthen their necks in order to look taller. Some people will actually do exercises to stretch their necks, or in a particular tribe that's formerly from Burma or Myanmar, now in Thailand, the women will put, will put rings in their necks to make their necks look longer. And there's actually a North American woman who's now adopted this as a fashion statement. So these are all examples of what could be called sexual selection. There's also another way, I think, that the neck could be of use, not strictly in terms of fighting, but in avoiding a fight, because there are ways that predators can be warded off by people if the people simply do something to make themselves look taller. If they stretch their arms up or try to look suddenly larger than they were, that can deter something like a, a lion or her hyena from attacking them. Bears will do something similar. They'll scratch a, 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 the bark on a tree as high up as they can reach. So they'll declare themselves to be the tallest bear in the neighborhood and the other bears, if they see them, they can't reach as high up on that tree, will leave the bear's territory alone. This might be something that sauropods could have done. Also, there's a form of mimicry where something like a moth will have fake eyes on its wings and that will scare off birds coming to eat its favorite food, the insects, because the birds will think those eyes are the eyes of an owl, a predatory bird. Now, this could possibly be employed with sauropods in a form of uh, reverse sexual selection or sexual intimidation, perhaps. And this is maybe not as likely as the other 